Let's finish our discussion of the gram-positive coxy by looking at the enterococci. The term enterococci refers to species and strains within the genus Enterococcus. And in particular, we're talking about Enterococcus fecalis and Enterococcus fecium, um, both of which can cause infections in humans. These are part of the normal flora of our GI tract. They used to be uh, believed to be streptococci, and more modern phylogenetics using uh, DNA analysis has revealed that they really belong in their own genus. <clears throat> they secrete bacteria sins, so they uh, very possibly play a role in keeping other gram-positive coxi from establishing themselves in the intestinal tract. Find them in pairs or short chains. Like most coxi, they're non-modal. One thing that makes them really adaptable to uh, certain niches within the gut and then sometimes out in the natural environment as well is that they have a, a, an unusually broad tolerance to environmental conditions. They can handle oxygen's presence. They can handle extreme anaerobic conditions. They can handle a broader range of temperatures, a broader range of pH, broader range of salt, and they can handle being around bile. Uh, bile is secreted by our liver in order to help us um, break apart and absorb fats, and bile itself tends to be pretty toxic. And the enterococci are adapted to actually tolerate pretty high concentrations of bile. So they do really well in the human gut, and then they also tend to do pretty well out in nature. For that reason, we often track enterococci from a pub public health perspective as a way of keeping track of our wastewater, and making sure that uh, wastewater, uh, whether it be through stormwater or pipe breaks or whatever, is staying contained and not finding its way into our water supply, our surface water, our groundwater, oceans, rivers, etc. Now, why do we worry about the enterococci? If they stay in our gut, they're typically just fine. Uh, they tend to be problematic when they get in the bloodstream and thus cause a bacteremia. If they uh, begin to form biofilms on the heart and form an endocarditis, uh, they are found in wound and surgical infections as well, particularly post-op infections. These are naturally multi-drug resistant, meaning we have a pretty short list of drugs we can use against these natural strains. And more and more frequently, we're seeing high levels of drug resistance, including vancomycin resistance. Now, vancomycin resistant enterococci implies that everything before vanc is off the table, that there's resistance to everything we would have rather used. Vancomycin is our drug of last choice, and thus, if they are vancomycin resistant, they are typically pan resistant. We typically don't have anything to treat them with. The good news is that VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococci, are still extremely uncommon, and we can hope that we can be smart and strategic and not allow them to become common. But they are, in fact, an emerging threat that needs to be on our radar. That's all I have to say about the enterococci. So learn them well. Learn your staphylococci, your streptococci, and your enterococci all very well. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.